Hello and welcome to this video on what is latent class analysis. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with QuantFish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please consider subscribing to this channel. Also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources including workshops that I offer through QuantFish. In this video, I want to provide a gentle introduction to latent class analysis and explain what latent class analysis is about. So let's get started. What is latent class analysis? Latent class analysis could be thought of as a latent variable model similar to factor analysis. And so in this path diagram, which looks like a single factor model, we have a set of indicators, in this case, binary items, dichotomous items that measure computer game preference. So the question that um, individuals here were asked was, do you play this type of computer game? For example, action games, log logic games, skill training games, and others. And so individuals were asked to answer yes or no. Yes, I play this game. No, I don't play this game. And the idea is, to figure out whether there are specific types of individuals who have a preference for specific type types of computer games. So the idea here is to extract a latent variable that represents computer game preference. Unlike a factor and factor analysis, the latent variable and latent class analysis is also a categorical variable, meaning it is not a continuous factor, a dimension that is being measured, but rather the values of the latent class variable are different categories. For example, players versus non-players or individuals who prefer action games as opposed to logic games. So this is something that is qualitative in nature where individuals are not necessarily ordered on a continuum of computer game frequency of playing, but rather what matters here is the type of game that individuals um, play or not. And so latent class analysis then is a latent variable model where the latent variable is categorical rather than continuous and also where the indicators are categorical, so binary or ordinal. That's what classical latent class analysis deals with, binary or ordinal indicator variables, items, and also categorical latent variables. We can put latent class analysis in the broader context of latent variable models to see how it compares to other types of latent variable models. And so uh, what is useful here is to look at the latent and observed variables and their scale level. So when we have uh, observed variables that are categorical and our latent variables are also categorical, then we have LCA here shown in green. When we have indicator variables that are continuous and the latent variables are categorical, then we call this type of analysis latent profile analysis although it also deals with latent classes. So the latent variables are also latent classes in the same way as in classical LCA with categorical indicator variables, but the indicator variables in latent profile analysis are continuous. And so as a result, what we are modeling for the observed variables is a little bit different than what is being modeled in LCA, but the idea is the same. On the other hand, we have latent variable models that deal with continuous latent variables and depending on whether they use categorical indicator variables or continuous indicator variables, we either have item response theory models which deal primarily with categorical, binary or ordinal indicator variables or we have structural equation modeling and factor analysis which deal primarily with continuous variables, although there are also estimation methods in factor analysis and SEM that can handle binary and ordinal variables. So you can see that latent class analysis fits right in 
to the set of latent variable models and the characteristic feature of LCA is that the latent variables are not continuous but rather that they are categorical. We can also think of latent class analysis as a mixture distribution model. A mixture distribution model is a statistical model that aims to find homogeneous subgroups in a population similar to cluster analysis. Now cluster analysis is not a latent variable model, but it has a similar goal where we try to unmix a heterogeneous population that consists of qualitatively different subgroups that should be, so to say, separated or that we might be interested in separating to find out what characteristics these different typologies or this different, these different groups have. And so mixture distribution models in general allow us to estimate different groups from the population where the groups are homogeneous and where there are differences, qualitative differences between those groups. Furthermore, latent class analysis could also be seen as a data reduction technique, similar to exploratory factor analysis. And the idea here is that with our categorical items, we have a whole set of response patterns. So you can see here response patterns printed from an LCA program, specifically here M plus was used to estimate a latent class analysis. And you can see that we have across these five items here that were considered a total of 31 different patterns that were observed with zeros and ones. Those were binary items where zero indicated I do not play this type of computer game and one indicated I do play this type of computer game. And so then we have all these different patterns. And now uh, when you look at them and the pattern frequencies, then it is very difficult oftentimes to make sense of all the data because 31 different patterns, considering all those in a statistical analysis would be a lot. And so we would like to reduce this information down to just a few prototypical patterns, particularly because some of these patterns here are not really different from one another. They differ merely due to measurement error. So there are some differences in these patterns that can be explained simply by random noise, random measurement error, and latent class analysis as a latent variable model allows us to work with variables that are corrected for measurement error. The latent variables consider, so say, unreliability in the observed item response patterns and allow us to take measurement error into account. And so this is another important goal of latent class analysis, in particular exploratory latent class analysis, when we have a larger set of items to reduce the information that is contained in the many response patterns that you may observe for these items. And I'll show you an example shortly where those 31 different patterns were redu reduced down to three different types. So here you can see a three class solution for the computer game items. And you can see that that um, summarizes the patterns a lot more neatly. So now you no longer have to look at 31 different response patterns, but rather you only look at three different response profiles from those three classes that were extracted here. How are the classes being extracted? It works in a similar way as an exploratory factor analysis where when it's a purely exploratory study where you don't have a hypothesis about the number of classes, you would go ahead and you would extract solutions with different numbers of latent classes and you would compare the fit of these models, for example, with information criteria such as the Bayesian information criterion BIC. Also, there are statistical tests um, to compare the number of classes, chi-square difference tests with bootstrapping. So there are different methods that allow us to statistically compare solutions with different numbers of classes to find the right solution. And we would also compare the profiles that we find for different numbers of classes to see which solution makes the most sense. So here the uh, conclusion was that a three class solution would be best. And you can see that 
what um, is the output of a latent class analysis are these profiles. Now, what do these profiles show? They show so-called conditional response probabilities for each item, so the endorsement probability given membership in a specific class. And you can see, for example, that class one is one where the probabilities are low for action and simulation games, or at least relatively low, and they are relatively high for logic and skill games. So those probabilities here above 0.7. And so we would interpret class one as a logic and skill player class. The um, class two is one with low probabilities on all items. So this would be interpreted as a non-player class because their probability of endorsing any of the computer games is below 0.1, so less than 10%. So those would be interpreted as non-players. And class three shows the opposite pattern of class one, where those individuals reported that they do play action and simulation games, but that they do not play logic and skill games very often. So it's, it's kind of like a mirror image of class one, which is interesting. And so you can see that clearly these classes are qualitatively different. Here there's not really a quantitative difference other than that class two doesn't play any game at all, but then between class one and class three, there's really a qualitative difference. Uh, it matters to say what types of games we are looking at. So that's one type of parameter that latent class analysis estimates are those conditional response probabilities for each item in each class. That's the parameter type number one in LCA. And the parameter type number two that is estimated in LCA are the class sizes, because we also want to know what is the probability that a randomly selected individual is in class one, two, or three. And so those are given here in the legend where you can see the percentages for each class, class one, we, in class one, we had about 19%, in class two, about 50%, and class three, about 32%. You can see that these percentages add up to 100%. So according to latent class analysis, everybody has to be in one and only one latent class. So the classes are exhaustive and mutually exclusive. You cannot be in more than one class and you have to be in one of the three classes. That's the idea. So then it's important that you extract enough classes to where everybody can be in a meaningful class, so to say, where the model provides a good fit to the data. So you can see that this is a much more compact solution compared to looking at 31 different response patterns. Now individuals are assigned to one of three classes. The classes have a clear interpretation. We have reduced our data down to three meaningful groups that differ qualitatively with regard to these computer games. So this is so say the key idea in latent class analysis to find a fitting model determine the number of classes and then estimate those conditional response probabilities as well as the latent class sizes, the class size parameter. And then what we can also do is we can estimate individuals most likely latent class membership based on those parameters and based on their observed response pattern. And so then each individual can be looked at in terms of which probability is highest. So for which class do these individuals have the highest probability of being a member in? And then we can assign people to their most likely class. And not only could we assign individuals to their most likely class, but we could also see how likely it is. Do you have a 70% chance of being in your most likely class or is the chance 90%? So there's also so say, a reliability measure for the class assignment at the individual level where you can see so say how reliably individuals are classified and you could look at the average class assignment probabilities as well to determine overall reliability of your classification model. So in summary, the goals of LCA are to study qualitative differences between individuals to determine latent typologies, to reduce data that is contained in item response patterns, 
to determine the number and the nature of the latent classes as well as their relative sizes to classify individuals into their most likely latent class. And another goal could be to relate the latent classes to external variables or covariates. So you could take a look at, for example, are there gender differences in computer game preference? Are there other classes related to age? Are they related to other variables that can be studied in latent class analysis with covariates? If you want to learn more about latent class analysis and how it is actually done, feel free to check out additional videos on this channel where I show how latent class analysis is done in the M plus software. Also check out the description for LCA and latent profile analysis workshops that I teach through Quantfish. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.